So many of us have the intuition that we see and hear and remember everything. Does our mind work like a video camera? Uh, it definitely doesn't work like a video camera or any kind of recording advice. We're not just um, you know, taking in information and replaying it later. The, the whole process is much more complex. And actually, m memory is reconstru reconstructive. It's, it's, we're taking bits and pieces of experience sometimes things that happened at different times and places and constructing our memories. Recollecting. When we recall something, that's, it, the process is more like one of reconstruction. Okay, so is that, is that a perfect process? Um, is uh, it fallible? How does it work? Uh, well, uh, so what happens in, when you go through life, you have experiences and you may uh, store bits and pieces of information. Um, but later on, other things can happen. People uh, can uh, talk to you. You can tell people about your experiences. Yeah. You can be fed misinformation about the experience. And these uh, activities can change your memory, can transform uh, or distort your memory. So that when you try to call up a memory for a past event, you're, you're reconstructing and there can be lots of errors. Okay, but, but surely if I'm really confident about, uh, about my, my belief or my recollection and it's really sincere and really emotional, surely that means it's more likely to be an accurate memory. Well, it may be slightly more likely to be an accurate memory if you're really confident uh, about it. Uh, but confidence is not a good indicator that your memory is accurate because false memories can be expressed with a lot of confidence, they can be expressed with a lot of detail, they can be expressed with a lot of emotion, um, and so they have the same characteristics as true memories. And, and just relying on those characteristics can mislead people into thinking that something is real when it's not. Hmm. Is it possible to implant a false memory, make somebody believe something uh, happened when it never actually happened? Absolutely, and I mean, in, in my own work, for example, we have uh, we've changed people's memories for the details of events that they did experience. Uh, we've made people, for example, believe that a, a car went through a stop sign instead of a yield sign, or, or a guy running from the scene had curly hair instead of straight hair. That's really easy to do, but you can go further with people. You can plant entirely false memories, whole memories, into the minds of people for things that didn't happen. Wow, so surely that has implications for uh, people testifying in court, like witnesses saying, yes, that was the guy that committed the crime, or yes, the car went through the stop sign and hit the other car. D does, does your research have implications for the, for the courtroom? It, well, it does because, um, you know, most of the time little, little errors that we make in memory uh, don't matter very much. I mean, it doesn't really matter if I, you know, if I tell you that I had, um, a hamburger for lunch instead of chicken. Um, but when it comes to the legal world, now very precise memory matters. And so um, memory evidence is precious. It, it needs to be preserved. It, it, it needs to be protected. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's not. And people or circumstances get in there and contaminate those memory traces. and lead to uh, travesties of, of justice. Wow. Are there any famous cases of false memories? Oh gosh, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I would uh, begin with. Uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, famous politicians yeah. who have uh, had distorted memories. And one of my favorite ones is uh, Hillary Clinton, who was running for the uh, presidency of the United States when she talked about a, a trip that she had taken to Bosnia. And she had a very vivid recollection of landing under sniper fire on this trip that uh, they, it was supposed to be a greeting ceremony, but instead they just had to run to the, to the base. And oh, later, photographs were revealed of this landing in Bosnia, and it was extremely peaceful. It was <laughs> uh, lots of children there. Hillary's daughter uh, was there. It, and so what, what's going on here? She had a distorted memory, one that resulted in a little bit of embarrassment for her because yeah. people called her Pinocchio, <laughs> uh, but she made a mistake. Yep. I mean, she, she had a false memory. And her case shows us that all that 
intelligence, all that experience, all that education, all that Yale Law School degree doesn't protect you from having false memories. You can all make those mistakes. That's interesting. Um, do, we, do, we do we ever repress memories? So if there's um, something bad that's happened in our childhood that we might want to forget on some level, uh, do we ever repress memories and do they ever come back um, without our knowledge? Oh, I, on this whole question of repression, I've, I've, you know, I have to say that what, what we do do is we sometimes don't think about things for a long time and can be reminded of them. Sometimes unpleasant experiences we don't think about for a long time and we can be reminded of them. But that is ordinary forgetting and remembering. This notion of repression, that you can take years of brutalization, banish it into the unconscious, where it's walled off from the rest of mental life, and then get in there and reliably recover it all, just no credible scientific support for this. And yet, um, many people have been prosecuted or s sued civilly based on claims of repression and so-called mm. derepression. Is it possible to tell the difference between a true and a false memory? Uh, we haven't had very much luck doing that. I mean, we've tried looking at emotional ratings. Maybe people are more emotional about their true ratings, but that yeah. doesn't um, make a difference. Maybe you see different brain images, if you did put people in an fMRI machine and you'd see differences between true and false memories, but there are barely any differences. Okay. I mean, maybe true memories and false memories would persist differentially. Maybe true memories persist longer, but we, we don't see even evidence for that. My name is Elizabeth. I think about memory. Mm -hmm.